Welcome back yes! <laughs> to soundtracking. <laughs> oh, they have been so excited about this film for for so long since it was kind of first kind of sort of just kind of like a carrot dangled in front of us. It was like, <laughs> oh, this looks like this is definitely for me. Do you mind talking a little bit about um, how the project kind of came to you and how you got involved with, yeah, with sure, the sure. letters? Um, so the funny thing about this movie, looking back, is when I was first sent it, mm -hmm. I knew nothing except for Olivia was playing Edith. Yeah. Which was brilliant because yeah. it meant when I read it, the most complex character on the page, I knew it was her, I could hear it, I could see it, entirely made sense. And so much of the complexity of the piece yeah. became simple. Um, genuinely, if I hadn't had her in mind, I probably would have thought of her immediately. But <laughs> yeah. it, I think it would have made it much tougher reading. Yeah, But hearing her voice and the multi sort of faceted, the emotional journey basically that that character yeah. goes on, the tiny little windows into vulnerability that I don't know anybody who does it better. And regardless, I don't mean that in a competitive way. I just mean knowing it's Olivia yeah. and hearing her voice I understood it. I didn't ask any questions about who this woman was or why or anything. So much made sense. Yeah. The other thing is, I had no idea it was a real thing. I so I was like, it. wait. So what was weird is I remember I rang the studio straight away and I was like, okay, I've read it. Olivia's going to be amazing in <laughs> yeah. this. But what my question is, what is the tone? What is the tone of this movie? Mm -hmm. That was literally my first question. And I then went to meet Johnny Sweet, whom I didn't know before then. And I learned very quickly that his background, he's a comedian. Yeah. He's really smart and really funny. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the comedy, what felt like the sort of obvious comedy, the laugh out louds that I'd had yeah. were meant to be. So yeah. that was right. And it's, it's meant to be really accessible and kind of easy to laugh at, easy to share. Mm -hmm. But equally, the, the complexity, the kind of... I don't... I'm so reluctant to say darkness because I don't want people to feel this is heavy and difficult. It's layered. That's but what it's it multi-layered. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. But what is there is really important stuff, really important big conversations. Mm. And what's been amazing in the slow release of it that we are going through now is hearing the different reactions and, and how people are picking up on some things that resonate for them personally yeah. that m that for some reason they some people come out and they're they're slightly devastated they're really profoundly <gasps> like emotionally a bit rocked by it because for whatever private reason there's a storyline that has really hit them mm. that other people appreciate from afar but don't need it and they don't resonate with that and they just come out going oh my god I had such a big laugh that's so great and I mean that's a it's a gift yeah. I think that's what's so kind of beautifully surprising about the film as well is the is the different themes that the film hits on and the different subject matters and the different kind of female perspectives on different situations whether it be the single mother whether it be the kind of you know the the you know the, under the kind of almost kind of parental kind of cage like positioning of someone an older woman you know the kind of spinster type thing as well there are so many I mean I could there's, it's it's incredible. It's rich it with is. subject matter, and, and it's only ninety six minutes. Wow. Who doesn't love that, right? <laughs> Who, Who else needs a small Who break else is from doing some that? of the? <laughs> I was going to say, we all need a bit of a break from some of the. They are amazing, but there have been some big hitting mm. three hour plus movies yeah. recently, and actually ninety six minutes whizzes by. Yeah, and it's important to get a little bit of difference out there, isn't it? Yeah, it whizzes by, but every second of it counts because it's got something to say in it and so many points of it as well. And it's so interesting you talk saying about Olivia, you know, kind of being attached to that character. And it's one of those films where you watch it and you cannot imagine anybody else playing any of those characters. And like a role made for Jessie as well. I mean I literally her feels like her I mean I mean this is a massive compliment, but her bones are in that character literally, almost. Absolutely. In a way. No they they, they are. It, it, I do feel that, actually, I actually, do you know what? I honestly feel that of all of them. If I think about Alicia Weir, little Alicia Weir, who is magnificent. Yeah. And her performance is absolutely brilliant. And I, I couldn't imagine anybody else yeah. doing what she does with, again, what seems like no effort whatsoever. 
Timothy Spall. Oh I mean, my God! Right? I hate him. I know. You, it's <laughs> not impossible. Timothy. No, <laughs> because <laughs> Timothy, as you probably know, is like one of the nicest, softest, most gentle people in the world. But he produces that performance. <gasps> it's so powerful. Yeah. Gemma Jones. Yeah. It's... Uh, I mean, who else could have played that? Gemma, I mean, it, it kind of goes on and on. And Every one of them. That's yeah. the, the brilliant, that's, brilliant thing. Casting is the most important part of my job. No two ways about it. Do you enjoy it. that part of it? Love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it because I know that it means everything. It sets the whole tone mm. for the... And you know what? It sets the whole tone for the, the film, for the audience who ultimately, that's who I make movies for. Um, and incidentally, it's really important for me to say one of the things that I have loved about the process of this... Studio Canal, Blueprint, Film 4, in fact. But Studio Canal have... It's so important to them that they make movies for the cinema. Yeah. Not just that they make film, but that they make films for cinemas, for people to share, have the shared experience mm -hmm. together. And they pushed on that from the very very beginning in a way that I probably didn't quite appreciate it as much as I do now obviously here mm. we are at the release of it the world has changed so much the industry has changed so much and it's magnificent that a company like that are making that the priority mm. it's so important yeah. that we bring people back to the to the cinemas no question yeah um but yeah the the so the casting is everything for me. It, it's also, it's really important to me to work with nice people. Yeah. I just, making movies is really difficult. It's, yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> yeah. And it makes a massive difference if you work with nice people. Yeah. Do you want to come with you? Dickheads. No, <laughs> I've done it and I don't want to do it again. I'm happy to leave that behind. Yeah. You do better work. For yeah. me, I certainly do better work if my energy is just about facilitating everybody doing their job better. Mm. Simple. Can I make a slight kind of personal thing? It's, I always find it slightly weird where there's a character called Edith in a... In a, in a oh, my God. I hadn't even thought of that. Okay, I'm just going to have to take that in for a moment. Um, yes, you can say it. It's weird. Like. I mean, it's just it, a name. Yeah. But it's a name that I only really associate with you. old people. <laughs> Because, or you. Or me. A gorgeous um, young person. Because it's kind of, you know, I've only ever met old Ediths. I've never really met kind of young Ediths. That's so um, funny. And it's just weird, you know, kind of that kind of thing. And I always, with films as well, what I try to do with the cinema experience is there's so much noise around, you know, films, reviews, all that kind of stuff, social media, all that thing. Trying to kind of, almost kind of block out the noise so you can go to the cinema with a kind of... Uh, a uh, blank canvas in a way, you know. Kind Did you of watch it on your own? Yeah. Right. Um, and and so then then when the kind of character comes, you go, oh my God, and it's 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 quite, it's quite confronting, isn't it? <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a weird comment to make, but it's... it's. Um, did you feel but, released? Was there a part of you who was released? Or I did felt you like feel I was like... with my people, to be honest. Did it's you? It's a combination of having That's... someone called Edith who swore all the time. Yeah. A lot of kind of... And I was like, oh yeah, this yeah. is freeing. You know, it's but did you also <laughs> yeah. feel that Jesse's character felt very like you yeah. and so you you sort of had the double whammy didn't yeah, you double, yeah there was a bit of yeah I was just kind of the namesake and the kind of spirit animal almost that's, <laughs> that's exactly what yeah. I mean yeah absolutely that's yeah. that's big yeah it's I'm delighted huge for me yeah I'm delighted huge. to give music, you that gift music is a is a beautiful kind of presence in this film as well talk to me a little bit about how you kind of navigated you know what you wanted it to be and you know was there anything in the script in terms of kind of musically, no, of what it was. Um... Um, <clears throat> no, the only thing was Alicia's character playing something, yeah. which in the end um, we went with the guitar and that felt totally right. Mm. And Malachi Kirby, obviously his character is, originally plays it, which is how the little girl gets hold mm. of it. Um, do you know, it's funny, mostly... I hear sometimes a song. It's what happened with me before you. I heard a, yeah. I had a song in my head right from before we started shooting. Um, an Ed Sheeran song that ended up being a big part of the movie. Um, sometimes it's an instrument or tonally I sort of know where I am. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> First time ever. Didn't know where I was with this. Oh, 
Ooh, just was not in a bad way, in a quite an exciting way. Yeah. I was slightly at sea. Also, I worked with a an editor whom I've never worked with before. So that was a new relationship. Mm -hmm. And the music really comes together when you start working together. Yeah. And she asked me as she, if I was comfortable, she, Melanie Oliver, asked me if I was comfortable with her building scenes every day. So in other words, we'd shoot, she'd look at the rushes the next day. Was I happy for her to build the scene and actually send it back to me quite quickly yeah. so that we could, in a very simple way, start to imagine the film. Mm -hmm. And not all led, you know, everyone works their own way. That's how she works. And I said, absolutely. And of course she said, do you feel comfortable if I put music on it or would you rather I didn't? Yeah. And again, directors are very different. And I said, no, no, you go, if you feel it, do it. Yeah. And what was really interesting on this, one of the interesting journeys was the music she chose was brilliant. But of course it already existed, so we couldn't use it. Mm -hmm. And again, I've never quite had such a complicated journey going from the temp to the real thing. Yeah. And yeah, it was complicated because there are so many traps doors that you can fall down and we fell down quite a few well because it's a period piece as well it's yep. kind of that kind of you know there's there are different ways you can look at that it's whether you embrace that side of it or whether you go no yeah and and emotionally how much do you want to support those moments or leave the actors to do yep. all the work comedy is really uh, yeah. hard to score but also what we were talking about earlier about the fact that it's so layered so if you go down one route with it then you're kind of almost ignoring the other elements to it. So I can completely understand how yeah. it must have been yeah. kind of tricky. Yeah. Um, yeah. But did the, I mean, what helped kind of then form what you, because I feel like that the music's got a beautiful relationship with the personalities yeah. of particularly those two women. Yeah. And that it's kind of, um, it's like a companion almost to them in a way, I feel. Uh, absolutely. Um, there was so much trial and error. Yeah. Um, another thing that is interesting is that editorially, pictorially, in terms of the edit, we actually got there relatively soon, uh, relatively early. Mm -hmm. So I showed it to the producers and to Studio Canal and Film 4 relatively earlier in the process than I've ever done before. Mm -hmm. So that, and they they got it and they were with me in terms of the big choices that we'd made. So what's interesting is I knew what I had and then it, it's kind of like throwing different ingredients at it and literally seeing what stuck. Yeah. And what was interesting was that some things would stick very quickly. Some scenes were actually relatively easy. Yeah. Often the emotional ones. Yeah. Um, the opening how to set up the world of the movie mm -hmm. was not easy at all <laughs> um and then to find yourself kind of going okay we've got a sort of vibe here and a sort of vibe here and i know i need something else here mm -hmm. was to have somebody who came with you to who could understand that journey yeah um so it was it was really complex but great you know there's nothing like the hard stuff yeah that sometimes you just have to keep pushing yeah um you know it's like when you have a great actor who you know hasn't quite got there yet and actually if they're being honest they know they haven't either yeah and you both have a choice in a moment with time pressure and loads of people in the room and you either have to you either go do you know what that's absolutely fine let's yeah. let's leave it there and i'll make it work and there are sometimes when you do have to do that because you have to judge whether you're going to get into diminishing returns yeah and the worst thing is to knock an actor's confidence mm -hmm. but equally there are some that you go I know I know you can do this again yeah and you feel the ones who go I'm gonna keep doing this yeah. until you tell me you're happy because it, it's got to be for the it's got to be for the purpose of the film it's absolutely gotta be for the bigger picture absolutely to but there's a way of saying that to somebody yeah it's like with a kid you know you yeah. have to be really well, there are different ways of doing it. I'm not going to tell anybody how yeah. to do it. I'm really aware that everybody parents in a different way, right? That's such an interesting way of describing it, but though, it in is, terms of like parenting a 
film. Yeah. And it is that. And you know how when it gets to like, you know, Christmas or a birthday <laughs> celebration or something and you've got different generations. <laughs> yeah. You still, there's a moment in your life where you are slightly parenting everybody in the room, <laughs> yeah. but you know that granny needs one thing and that the four-year-old needs another. <laughs> yeah. And so you, ha you can't just apply one mm -hmm. version. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of that. So how did you come to the choices that you made then? What was, you know, in terms of finding the right person or people to work with on, on the music side of things in terms of navigating that and having to make those tough choices? Um... Well, to be honest, we we went out to quite a few different composers and we literally gave them a couple of scenes. Yeah. So I didn't give them the whole thing to watch because that yeah. didn't feel right. Yeah. Um, I also gave them the music that felt, the temp music that felt right yeah. and tried to use words sometimes to explain why something <laughs> yeah. felt right. Yeah. Um, which is hard because so much of the time with music it's a feeling it's a feeling and again but you know what it's like you know it's like when you find somebody you sort of know whether you're going to be mates or not because as you try to describe something you either see them going <laughs> no idea what you're talking about <laughs> or you, you yeah it's just not yeah. it's, you know it's not working the simpatico is yeah. not there and then others who are almost already finishing a sentence because they've they've got it um so, yeah, we went, so I went to very different people. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to a mixture of people, some of whom I'd worked with before, which is quite complicated because yeah. you're putting a lot on the line. It's a bit like auditioning an actor you've worked with before and Oh God, it's really hard because yeah. you don't love them any less than you did five minutes before. Yeah. But if it's not quite right for, again, sometimes for reasons that's really hard to put into words to explain. Yeah. And they will simply take it as rejection or not. Mm. That's really, it's really tough putting yourself in that yeah. place. Yeah. Um, so that that was really hard on this. There were moments that were really hard for those reasons. Equally... There were people, composers who I went to, who were uh, so magnanimous and amazing. There was one composer who came with me on, for quite a while because some things f did fall into place really quickly. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, God, if this is right, then the rest is going to be. And mm. then we just got to a point where we couldn't, I couldn't make it work. And I, again, it was to do with language. I, I was like, this is as much me because I'm not being able to explain well enough for you to hear it. And we knew that we'd come to the end of the road. And he was absolutely phenomenal in his generosity of saying, it's all cool. Yeah. These things happen. And he's absolutely right. It. These things do happen. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately we started again and I got lucky and I'm really thrilled with how it panned out. And that's, you know, that's another life experience, isn't it? Because... With every tough thing that you come up against, you you learn something, don't yeah. you? And often those are the hardest lessons yeah, to learn. Absolutely. And if you can take the best from them, be really honest and open, you're going to walk in a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger, even if you don't quite realise it, mm. into the next conversation. Yeah. It's like the next project. So, you know, I can't wait for whatever that may be next. Having been through this with such amazing actors, with Olivia and Jesse in particular... Yeah. They're utterly extraordinary. I mean, you know them in the way that you do, and I'm sure you have done sort of over the years, and you will have seen them grow in some ways. Mm. It's it's such a privilege to work with people who give you literally everything. Yeah. And who, to watch them, it's funny, we joke about it, but actually the respect they have for each other because of how much they like each other, yeah. how much they gave each other, was amazing. And that is... You cannot ever take that for granted. Yeah. It's really vulnerable doing what they do. And to watch somebody else literally hold the other one so that the other one could go, right, I'll just take all my clothes off and do my best. And the other one, you could see the other one going, you do it because I've got you. Yeah. And then they would swap roles. It was amazing. Absolutely. I've never quite had that calibre of in intense 
it's more than friendship. Yeah. It's, there's a really sort of profound professional respect yeah. for each other. With Olivia as well being a producer on this as well, you know, in terms of that kind of, it was really interesting. I was uh, I was chatting to Emma Stone actually about poor things, and it was amazing to hear her talk about the kind of you know the the choices that she was allowed to make as an actor in it, but being a producer, you know, in terms of no, I made the choice to do that because I was I had that producing hat on as well as being it in front of camera. With Olivia kind of coming with that kind of um, side of things as well, that must be a, a great support as a director to know that she's wearing both of those hats in something like this? It, it was, without question, although she will take no credit for that, I know. <laughs> of course she would. Um, <laughs> but even silently, just ha having that and having her there in that capacity mm. was huge for me. This was, it sounds a bit wanky, and I, I hate for it to be like that, but it's really, it feels important to say that this was the most female, not only female-led, but... I've never worked with more women behind the camera as well as in front of the camera. And I didn't really clock that until there was a particular day when somebody, it was their first day on set. Yeah. And we'd had quite a while, so we'd all sort of got used to each other. And an actor just came up to me and said, the vibe is unlike I've ever had before, and I've just worked out why. And I was like, oh, really, why? And she said, just look around you. And it it does make a difference. And... Um, I'm really proud of that. We we definitely made an effort. Yeah. Um, in in every HODs, there were more women than men. Yeah. Therefore, that filtered down. Mm -hmm. um, but also, from the producing side, it was really important to have a few women balancing out what is still very male-led, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, even though the men on this have been phenomenal and so supportive, um, it was brilliant for something that ended up as su it's such a celebration of women. This movie, yeah, absolutely, in the in the most fabulous way. Not at all. Again, not in a political, trying agenda driven way. It just is. And I think what's what I love, what I'm so proud of about it, is it it is in a way that. If you don't see that, that's totally cool. Yeah. If you need to see it, you want to see it, yeah. it's there to be seen. Yeah. It's not threatening in any way. It just is what it is. Yeah. And um, that's a balance that was important for us to try and strike. I also love the complicated nature of their relationship and the kind of... And it's... And it's it feels really kind of honest and truthful in the way that female relationships can be. Absolutely. The most complicated relationships. And in the, the most hurtful yeah the most cruel um but then the most supportive and the most supportive <laughs> yeah. and the most profound and the ones that will give you the space to go where you need to go yeah and hold you in that place yeah. but they can also it's like a sibling they, yeah the the if they want to inflict pain it's like no other because it's really weird experience without giving anything away the <laughs> the events that result in the letters being written by the person that they write them, even that is a, a, a gift of liberation. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's only by the end, but it is by the end, that you realize everybody recognizes that. <laughs> and everybody has just reached the point of being able to see the good in that. Yeah. So the and there are people who get hurt along the way, but they you know by the end that they've recovered, and that they will continue to recover. Yeah. Um, and that's that's very female. I think there's a there's a strength in there. Yeah. Um, but you know, I think female friendship is honestly is probably. Th I somebody asked me recently about it, and I said I realised that I think my female friendships define me. And I really mean that. When I look around who my friends are, and, and I don't mean that excluding the men, I just mean my women friends mean the most to me, and they are the people that I turn to in my hardest, in the time when I need the most support. Yeah. And I, I love them with all my heart. Equally, being hurt by somebody who I thought was a very close friend is the most devastating and penetrating feeling yeah. because you don't see it coming. Yeah. And in that sense, this movie is about a really big, important topic, which is female friendship yeah. and family within that. Um, 
And that's also one of the things, I didn't quite appreciate that. And I don't know if it could have had that quality without Olivia and Jesse yeah. being who they are and just innately what they bring to life as well as to each other. Sweden, can't go without talking about the Sweden. Can I swear um, now? Go Fuck for yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Can having, you imagine how filthy the set was? Uh, well, that's the thing. Fucking I, hell! So I grew up in a in a little family-run hotel where I had five women working in the kitchen who swore like troopers. So that's Brilliant. where I learned to swear. Brilliant. And I was kind of watching the and I'm coming out of the film and writing loads of things down that I wanted to talk to you about. And one of the thing was, did they did they stick to the script with the, with the profanities and the because it's it, I think people assume it's easy to swear. But in particular, how this is, and it's also so funny because in that time period, you know, it was so offensive to Absolutely. use profanities. Absolutely. It was, you know, it was a hanging offence almost in a way. It was kind of, it's crazy. And so it's just the kind of, the, the, the kind of, the punching of what that means to people to receive it. But the kind of, the, I mean, just the looks on certain people's faces when they get to say <laughs> things as well is just like it's brilliant. But yeah, what was that kind of? Nav was it all? We did you stick to script? Do you have to kind of? Do you let them kind of just rep with it or or, or um, they're both? I would say ninety percent of it was in the script. Yeah. So there were a couple of extras that just flew in <laughs> and they totally worked and that was fine. Yeah. Um, there were some people like Tim, for example. I don't think this gives too much away with whom I spent a long time talking to him about his character's relationship to that language yeah. and whether he should and where. And okay. we were really, really careful about exactly where it would come before or after a certain word yeah. within a sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For reasons that make complete sense. Mm. Um, Equally, Alicia, for example, hearing her, it, it's really important that that happens in a certain way mm -hmm. with a degree, with such a degree of, it's got to feel real, man. It's got to feel completely believable. Yeah. And that already her character has a different relationship to that level of language mm -hmm. than anybody else in the movie. And there's a modernity within that that I think is really interesting. Maybe the most important thing to say is, you know, this whole project came about because those letters are for real. So and when Jenny, Johnny found those letters, he was like, you've got to be fucking no. kidding me. Yeah. And then found out, like, who would write this and, and what the story was and who the people were around it, it then began to fall into place. But that's the most important thing to say is that the majority of the letters in the movie are real. And what I love about them is, A, how <laughs> fucking rude some of them are <laughs> yeah. I mean they are off the charts even if it's a tiny sentence also some of them are not rude at all but it's like somebody trying to be really rude <laughs> I don't know what to it's say. like a kid finding a language I hate you and one you know, of the them, way that yeah. happens which is hilarious and that moment where a character uh, so there's two characters and she's going stop using that one word <laughs> It's just that, it's like, why? It, that's yeah. almost no, that it's... childlike thing of kind of, because she's so, oh, it's just, yeah. But it's that... literally, you see these women, you find that they're literally finding a voice within the movie. And we all laugh at it because it's very funny. But there is, again, something really important in finding a way of expressing yourself. Mm. And it doesn't have to be through bad language, but allowing, mm. a, if a movie allows you to do that, there's actually, again, there's another layer under there that's really important. I want a, a spin-off as well on the female detective agency. Oh, my God. <laughs> Superb, right? So good. So good. <laughs> Which includes the men in there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of the reason why she's so brilliant is that they are what a bunch oh of dicks, God. right? I mean, honestly. Just useless. Yeah. Absolutely useless. Fabulous as well. God love those two. Oh. I mean, they're, I love them. Love All those them casting moments are just, they're pristine. They're just kind of pitch perfect. Bless you, thank you. You know, some of those are people like Joanna Scanlon, Paul oh, Shahidi, just, oh. Hugh Skinner. They all come from my theatre life 
before yeah and I just knew that this was the kind of piece that I needed to have people who understood the craft of comedy yeah and that's I just so many of them just fell into you know they came back into my mind because I thought I know this voice and I know yeah. who can carry it off and I know who won't be afraid when I say we've got to go again because it's not quite working it's not quite funny enough yeah and there's a craft to that yeah and you have to put your ego to one side yeah. and trust the process and boy did I get the cast for yeah. that to come with me I mean Dame Eileen Atkins can we just <laughs> have a moment <laughs> Right. Everybody agrees. Anyone else? <laughs> um, oh, listen, it's always great to chat to you and thank oh, you, you for this. It really was a, an absolute... Um, it was a treat, but it was also surprising for all the right reasons because it. I just thought it took me somewhere I wasn't expecting whilst Brilliant. making me laugh a Brilliant. lot. Thanks so Brilliant. much, Thea. Thank no, you. Cheers. Total pleasure. Lovely thank to you. see you. You too.